work at it. Although the first time I went on stage was still to this day one of the best you killed. shows I've had. Because it was all, all my friends. Right. It was in college, you yeah. know. Yeah. Everybody was excited. So Guys, great to meet you both. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Elizabeth, um, you've said I had a great time making this sweet movie. What's your favorite memory? Um, that I get to wear pajama bottoms to work <laughs> is probably my favorite memory. Um, I really I liked this process from the very beginning. We we got to see these um an animatic sort of of the ducks and and our characters and what the world was going to be, and then just watching it blossom throughout. You know, it's a long process and many iterations. And um, you know, even though I had this this essential through line from from the beginning and then bringing in i remember the first time i heard danny devito oh yeah and it, i just died laughing he's so good it's so funny and so um him and then aquafina when she came in to yeah. play chump was hilarious so it just kept getting better and, and more fun i thought Kamal, this is all about leaving the nest taking risks you made a big one you took a big risk when you decided to leave your nest um and go into comedy when all of your family were in the med medical industry. How did you make that decision and what was it like? How did you feel telling them that, hey, this is the path I'm choosing? Well, I knew I could not be a doctor because the stakes are so high for every job and it felt like yeah. a lot of pressure. Um, and I just saw, you know, my dad doing it and it felt, it felt like a difficult job. And I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> Um, and so I, I truly went to school. I wasn't good at anything. I tried a lot of stuff and then I tried stand up and I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm not good at it, but at least it's fun. And that You're was it. very good at it. Oh, thank you. But the first he time. He got good at it. I got he good had at, to it. Work at it. Although the first time I went on stage was still to this day, one of the best you killed. shows I've had. Cause it was all, all my friends. Right. It was in college. You yeah. Know? yeah. Everybody was excited. So. It didn't really feel like at any point I was like, I'm now going to be a comedian. It just sort of happened slowly. And at one point I was like, oh, I guess I guess this is my life now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elizabeth, success in, in any industry is really tough. And usually what gets in our way is fear or, mm -hmm. you know, the fear of uh, rejection. I love what you've said about your success. The reason why you've been successful is you haven't been afraid to raise your hand. Where have you gotten that courage from? Wow. You know, I just realized pretty early on the worst thing that could happen is someone says no and you're still alive and you just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So I've just really lived by that since I was very young. And, um, you know, I just felt like I try and I try and uh, implore my kids to do that, too, right now, you know, like try things. And I understand I really see how young people, especially do fear like rejection and failure and they it's very hard to see it as a learning opportunity and as something that just makes you grow or and sometimes it depresses you sometimes it just yeah. is really yeah. hard and that's it's that's good feedback too so i don't know i've just always known that it was all all good feedback um and and that i can't define myself by other people's nose i have to define myself by what actually is positive and happening in my life what I do get to do and act on because that is me. The, yeah. the people saying no and like, all right, that's not, well, I didn't do that. So that's obviously not me, not my path. Um, I don't know. I've just always had that clarity. And that's good you do that with your kids because I've seen kids grow up who are like weird and specific and are into like strange things. Then as they get older, they like try and sand those off and become like everybody else. And it's truly heartbreaking yeah, to see I agree. because they're yeah. defining their own self-worth by how, how other people think of them. Yeah. I love that. And finally, I can't go without asking you, Elizabeth, in this film, you know, when the family gets to Jamaica, their breath is taken away. Was there anywhere here in Ireland when you got here, you went, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Actually, well, Elizabeth does a great Jamaican accent. <laughs> I can leave that up to Keegan, who I'm sure will be interviewed at some point. Um, you know, I thought that the, um, what is it? Sorry, uh, the the Causeway, Giant's Causeway. Giant's Causeway, yeah. I was blown away by Giant's Causeway. Absolutely blown away. And just couldn't, I, I've just never seen anything like it anywhere in the world. I mean, I know it's so specifically, it's in Northern Ireland. Um, and it's so specific to that landscape. And it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. It was fascinating to me the history of that place and the mythology behind it, but also just the physicality of the monument, the, the natural monument is blew my mind.
Well, Elizabeth, we can't wait to have you back. And Kamal, we can't wait to have you here either. Thank you for this film. My kids cannot wait to see it. Yay. Oh, great. I hope they love it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys.